Hey everyone, and welcome to the weekend November 4th Stock Talk. We have a lot to go over today, as always, and uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, coming back, whether you're new, whether you're returning, coming back and watching these Stock Talk videos. Do it for you guys, and this is a weekend edition, so hopefully you've been relaxing over the weekend for yet another volatile week. Uh, and then I want to also share a couple of um, members who have been doing pretty well in this volatile stock market, and I'll you know, share some of the thought, their thoughts on the markets as well as we move forward, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Here's the SPY or the S&P 500 on the yearly chart. Now, the, in the last talk, talk we concluded on Thursday evening, I believe, right? And this is where we left off Thursday evening. And you know, what we saw from the generation of that candle was that the bulls are still in the market. There are still buyers in the market, which is a good thing, right? And you know, you guys can see in previous instances, we surpassed the reversal candle, right? This is a reversal candle and we closed on top of it. That is a positive sign for the markets. But at the same time, we identified a gap fill area from around 268 to 270. And we talked about the potential to gap fill that area. And the reason is the market is so volatile that one to two to three to four dollar movement intraday is entirely possible. And that we can get these wild swings and that gap can be filled quicker than you expect. So, you know, and I also talked about many times in the past how we're not going to, you know, come on down very quickly and then get a get a, you know, like an elevator back to the upside. That's not going to happen, in my opinion. And if we do go up, it's going to be more of a stepwise fashion, slowly but surely moving up. So, so far, we're attempting to establish a support level at the technical support level from 258 to 261. Now, in my opinion, here's the deal with this, right? We have the FANG stocks that reported already, right? We've had, we have Apple out of the way. That was one uncertainty from the markets, right? And that's moving past us. Earnings isn't over, but the, these FANG stocks earnings are pretty much over, okay? The bulk of it. So that's done. Second, November 6th is election, midterms elections, right? That's on uh, Tuesday. So, you know, what can we expect from here to Tuesday and possibly the rest of this week, more volatility. So you can imagine, can we gap fill this area and possibly go a little lower, flushing out the weak bulls out of the market? Yes, we can, and that is entirely possible. So short term, let's say this week is more uncertain, right? It could fluctuate wildly within this range. Medium term, what do I expect? Now, medium term, I expect us to be pushing to the upside. So values like on the SPY chart that you're looking at right now, 275, 280, even higher, are entirely possible, in my opinion, as we move to, let's say, near the end of November um, towards December. Okay, so I think that's entirely possible. But this week, since all of this uncertainties aren't out of the way, and you can imagine you can imagine a scenario, right? A lot of people are talking about elections and when the elections are done, then the markets are going to be rising. But there's also other things like trade tensions and whatnot. I don't place too much emphasis on that. But the, the one thing you have to keep in mind is once elections are done, we can move lower right after before we move higher, right? And where can we move? I think we'll move in within this range, within, within the, this range from 265 around... Um, to 270, possibly a little more or less around the area before we move back to the upside. Okay, so guys, looking at historical patterns, right? When we're establishing that bottom and we moved higher, can we go lower? Of course we can, right? It's not going to be a swoosh back up. Look at this, came down, established a bottom, went up, went, you know, did a double test down here, and it didn't make a previous low. Same as here, it didn't make a previous low and then moved higher. So can we come down and then get some of the weak bulls out before it moves higher? Yes, we can, right? So keep that in mind as we move forward. I think the markets and the economy obviously is looking solid, and I think the markets in the midterm, medium term, will be pushing higher. All right, let's take a look at TVIX. 
So TBIX or volatility, and you guys can see on um, Friday we did push higher. We uh, you know started the day lower, but we ended up pushing higher closed at 46.20 so can this one move higher a little bit as markets drop to the gap fill area possibly a little lower of course it can right we can have some vol volatility could spike 50 to 52 dollars the thing the thing about this is you know i think the general direction here it will be pushed to the downside as we move forward um all right so let's take a look at a couple of um things from the from the course so uh, we got a lot of members in the course actively talking about how to trade where to enter and even i kind of posted my positions right in terms of when i entered uh into uh, a long position the past few days so uh, those turned out to be extremely profitable um but the one thing that we want to be cautious about in this market environment which i've told the members is you know once you've gotten that profit if you've gotten that 10 15 20 percent profit it's okay to take some of that out um because um you know i don't think we're out of the woods yet so we'll probably have better entry positions but at the same time if you're long and you you have a decent position uh you know where you started your position then you know by all means, I, my, in my opinion, you could hold long as we move forward. So again, that's just some of my thoughts. You don't have to implement that. Here's Smart Trades with Kevin, the course website. Uh, advancing your potential in the stock market. So it's really about you guys, right? Yes, I'm here to help you, but it's really about your ability to find technical uh, areas where you could buy and possibly take a long position. Um, and at the same time, identifying where to sell and take your profits. Those are big big factors and then one thing is about you know obviously making technical patterns identifying them correctly the second thing is really about can you implement them correctly are you able to pull the trigger correctly that's that's really re another big deal so uh here a letter from me of course and you guys can see testimonials from course members we have members in the course that have made you know over a thousand dollars on a one quick trade it was just like an overnight trade and that was that and that's perfectly fine. This volatile environment, you get in, you got your profit, you come out. And that's all that. So, you know, congratulations to these members. And, um, you know, we've done pretty well in the course. So uh, congratulations, everyone, and keep that going. And, uh, you know, this is, guys, it, not every single trade is going to be profitable. However, if you learn from what you've done well, learn from what you've done not well. That's how you gain experience. It's, it, this is just, you know, this is life in general, right? I don't have to tell you guys. So in the course, you can see that, you know, we have introduction. You have the link to the Discord group that we use. We talked about markets, how to identify those buy, sell, stop loss areas. And I give you guys specific indicators, ETFs that I use, and various case studies that I look at to pinpoint how I identify trends on various time frames, various price charts, and indicators so check this out if you haven't already uh, i think this has been very useful for a lot of people who have signed up so uh we'll keep that going as we move forward all right let's take a look at commodities four slash cl or crude oil futures um crude oil futures is one that we haven't changed and right it, th this analysis is really simplistic i mean i don't i don't think i have to you know talk about this very much is that it was it was on a downtrend and this is a bear flag pattern right every time it came down is a bear flag pattern and we're moving lower and lower and lower so the thing about this is if you're shorting crude oil you would have already made money obviously now the thing here is um you know you can see my support line 62 dollars how close are we to 62 dollars we're pretty close so you can imagine we can get a reaction off of this level right and if we get a reaction off this level, then crude oil would be, even though it's in a bearish pattern long term, short term, it could be moving higher. So what could you be doing if you're shorting? You should have, you know, you could have considered at least start covering your positions, right? If you were shorting, because we've fallen so much, we're below the 20 period moving average, and we can we can have a bounce. So your risk is becoming greater if you're hoard, holding a short position as it's moving significantly lower. That's something to keep in mind as we're moving forward. But for those of you who were interested in shorting crude oil, it was DWT, and DWT has been doing very well. I talked about DWT here. I said it looks good, and DWT has been continuing to move higher. This is 
inverse crude oil. So as crude oil moves lower, DWT would be moving higher. And that's the one for you guys to look at. Okay. Four slash NG or natural gas. Now, natural gas was one that is, this is a difficult pattern. Why do you think this is a difficult pattern to trade? Ask yourself this question before I give you the answer. Well, you should know why this is difficult to trade because it's sporadic. It doesn't hold a definitive support line. It doesn't hold a definitive resistance line. So it's more of a range of resistance or a range of support, but you can't really see the range until after the fact. After the full candle has formed, then you can see it, right? So this is a hard pattern to trade. I agree because, but the, the thing is, it is on a more bullish trajectory. What natural gas is doing right now, it seems to be more bullish, but can you enter into a natural gas, um, you know, long trade on natural gas? And that's difficult because we're already in a position in which we're nearing the resistance area. Can we break out? We can, but just based off past trends, we've gotten rejected. So first off, you have to argue, why is this a bullish trend? Well, can you see the 20 period moving average sloping higher? But every time we close below the 20 period, we never had a follow through below the 20 period. Hence, that's why natural gas is bullish. But we're nearing the resistance. So there's really, in my opinion, nothing that you can do with this chart. Uh, but we'll just have to see how this one plays out. We don't have to take a position on every single, uh, you know, trade. So here's four slash GC or gold futures, right? We have resistance, definitive resistance at 1241, which we've talked about over and over and over again. And hence here, there's nothing that you can do with this chart either. But what you can say is that this is on a bullish trajectory. This should push to the upside. That's all we can say, but you can imagine when that will occur. That's anyone's guess, right? Look at gold over here. How many days did it take? Uh, you know, how many days here did it take for us to break above this resistance? You know, this was, you know, a couple of months to do that, right? And now, you know, it's been a month already. Gold is struggling, but it's on a bullish trajectory. That's what I can say. <laughs> it's struggling to move higher. Let's take a look at a couple of your comments. Rizwan, we'll start with yours. Uh, thank you everyone for making your comments, posting your tickers. If you guys want me to take a look at your tickers, be sure to comment it in the description, a comment box down below, comment area. And then if you enjoy these videos, please hit the thumbs up button, highly appreciate it. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, so SFM. <clears throat> so let's take a look at SFM. Okay, so you were shorting SFM, of course, with Sprouts. You will cover around $25. So 25 is over here. So yeah, just be just be on the lookout. $25, um, if you identify that as a support area, you could. But at the same time, you know, 25.43 is also an area I would be looking at, right? Of course, you when you know if it's going down, you would be paying attention to your intraday chart especially if the you know if there's heavy volume selling to the downside you want to watch those support areas and their reaction off that support areas and of course if the reaction is significant something that we talk about in the course a lot as well but if that reaction is significant what defines significant then you would probably cover so good job i think your support uh, could be not necessarily 25 but around 25 40 25 50 as we move forward okay good job Prashanth, great analysis. Thank you. Uh, can I get my thoughts on, I'll take a look at one of those tickers. So I'll do the first one, uh, Prashanth, uh, V-E-E-V. -E -E okay. Yeah, so this one looks good, right? This one has shown the ability to recover. That's great. But at the same time, you can imagine we've gone higher significantly, right? And we've gone higher significantly, especially if we start, you know, moving sideways just note that we can come down and perhaps make up another you know probably fill this gap over here around 88 dollars this kind of corresponds to broad markets right you can see how we gapped higher uh similar with markets but um you know don't be surprised if it comes down but i like this overall trajectory since uh it has the ability to push to the upside so good job prashanth on identifying this pattern uh rocky 
Uh, do you think TVIX will move up to 70 80s after November 6th? I think it's less likely. I talked about TVIX. In a moment. I think it's less likely that we'll move to 70 80 uh, unless we get that really, you know, capitulation flush surprise that no one expect, not many people expect uh, to the downside. Uh, otherwise, I you know, right now I can't see volatility pushing up that high uh, in the in the in the medium term. Okay. Uh, Jbroad, uh, Apple, PE too low compared to others. Uh, seven day options, Synthartis, K9, uh, Yasser, Chris, Jason, everyone. Thank you for commenting, making these um, comments on these videos. Highly appreciate it. And we'll take a look at. Uh, I think we have one more ticker by K9. So it's a BL, black line. So here's black line. Um, interestingly enough, here was earnings and, whoa. Okay, so obviously not a very good reaction after earnings and this is not good, right? This is, um, we'll have to see some sort of bottom being formed before we could think about taking a long position. Should this be a bottom, right? This uh, 4157 level, if that is a bottom, we need to see consolidation in this area, right? Consolidation or possibly some sort of um, bottoming area around this vicinity. Because the earnings came out on November 1st, and the aftermath of the earnings was no good, right? Here was November 1st. Uh, and here was a reaction after November 1st. I would wait on this one before taking any sort of position. This is on a pretty steep downtrend. So you can imagine when it's this steep, they, there might be something wrong in this company that people are expecting even before earnings come out. So keep, them, keep that in mind as we move forward. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I will see you guys on the weekday, of course, on the weekday stock talks. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And uh, yeah, happy trading. See you later.